boys welcome back to the channel and today we got a pretty good one for you guys so it's kind of a, an extension of a video i made a couple days ago where i went over how to tune and i had mentioned that i was gonna cover how to tune a drift car because tuning a racing car or a top speed car and a drifting car these are all completely different practices and not a lot of the stuff can be cross applied i suppose is the proper term or brought over from one to the other so today i'm gonna do as good a job as possible of explaining how to tune um like this drift car right here i've tuned myself and fair warning i don't drift cars for real rear wheel drive i like point drifting and all wheel drives better for that so this is not a rear wheel drive drift tune tutorial but if you're just trying to learn how this is definitely the easiest way to tune a drift car so that it's usable and very easy to manage around corners and just get to do exactly kind of what you want to do so without wasting any more of your time you've already had to sit through my boring intro let's show you boys how to tune a car okay so the first thing we got to do to tune a drift car is pick which car we want to tune and I got a couple extra AE86s lying around so I'm just gonna do one of these because there's a lot more customizations than a normal car so this will be a good explanation car. So the first thing you want to do with any car is you want to come under the garage section section good lord upgrades and tuning customize and upgrade and now we're going to get to the not as important part this is going to be very similar to the racing aspect because we're pretty much just looking for better parts so i'm going to engine swap i like a v8 i just like having more power because i'm i'm point drifting right like i want to go faster i, I don't want a tandem so much as is in a tandem build but you will drift very well with this build throw your engine on get more horsepower it doesn't really matter make sure it's all wheel drive unless you're rear wheel drive i can't guarantee this works but all wheel drive is what i'm comfortable with it's what i recommend i think it's easier to learn on okay so i just put a quick body kit on it um so something that forza added that wasn't in horizon 4 is actually a drift tire compound so you're always going to want to put those on now it is actually the best quality it's very similar to the sport tire compound but a little more geared towards actual drifting. So I recommend putting those on. Make your rims pretty big too. I find this always helps as well. Not a lot, but every little bit, right? And then we can put the stance out a little bit. Again, none of this is super important. It's just stuff I do and you're more than welcome to follow along. Next, I'm gonna put a seven speed transmission on this car just because my shifter only has seven gears. You can put up to 10. You don't really need it though. So I would recommend putting just the seven on because then you can follow along exactly with what we're doing here. Also, yeah, you're gonna wanna put on the drift uh, differential, even though we're gonna change all that, it doesn't really hurt. Now, you can. it doesn't really matter what brakes you put on because I've never ever seen someone adjust brakes. I'm gonna put on my drift suspension. That's a big help actually, because that eliminates a bunch of stuff we have to adjust. And then the anti-roll bars, just put them to max. And then obviously a bit of weight reduction. And then with the engine, put all this to race spec. Race spec means just whatever gives you the most horsepower, always the last option. I'm gonna finish this off and meet you when we're fine tuning. Okay, and now to fine tune, I guess you can come over to the custom tuning section on this page and enter into it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the tire pressure. Now this is gonna be different for most cars. Sometimes if you want to slide more, you're actually gonna have a, use 30 as a benchmark. If you want it to slide more generally above 30, however, I know the Terreno has a ton of horsepower for its weight. So we're actually gonna to wanna to be a bit under 30 and you always want your rear tire pressure about three or four PSI below your front tire pressure. So it doesn't matter whatever your front tire pressure is at, set your rear three below that gearing this is where it's gonna get a little tricky first thing i always do with gearing is i pull the final drive out almost all the way and i kind of just make the same general shape with all <laughs> the best and easiest way i can explain it to you is you're making a shape so you pretty much want it to be an arc first second and third should be very similar to like a normal car and then as soon as you get to fourth year you actually want it to be very high up and you're gonna have an even smaller arc with the rest of your gears here. So I'm gonna explain a little bit later why this is important, but once you have it set like that, now we can take our final drive and pull that back out again. Keep in mind, this isn't our final product. We are probably gonna adjust this once again, but this is just a good benchmark somewhere to start with. Alignment, this is me personally. I always give camber negative in the front and rear. Toe, I will, this is again something you have to play with. Uh, I know on this car it's about a four. I always have my toe and my front pretty high, like a three to five. 
And then my toe in the rear is always about one, one and a half points below where we are on the front. So right now we're gonna do a four and a two five. Again, these could change. This is just all theoretical till we actually get in the car and test it out and figure out what needs to change. Anti-roll, you don't actually have to touch this, springs or damping because when we put on the drifting suspension, that set all this perfectly for us. Cor if you have downforce options, put it towards cornering every time. We don't happen to have any right now, so I'm gonna leave those. Braking force again, never have ever touched it in my entire life. And now with differential, where it gets a little important. Front and rear acceleration, 100%. Now your rear deceleration, you wanna put this around 75%. I don't really know if it does anything. I've just always done that. You can do it too. Now, this is me personally. I like an all wheel drive drift car, but I like more power in the rear a lot more power in the rear because that generally gets you to kick out to one side or the other because your tires are spinning a lot faster back there and having that little bit of power in the front wheels is going to allow you to recover if you're about to oversteer one direction so that little bit of all-wheel drive will save you lots of time and let you get more angle but you still want more power in the rear because it's going to let your tires spin a lot more and it's going to feel like your car is just drifting without so much effort so I'm going to apply this setup and we're going to go out onto the runway and I'm going to fiddle around and we're going to see if it's perfect, maybe right out of the bag and why we adjusted our gearing ratio the way that we did. Okay, so as you can see, we're drifting pretty good. So our tire pressure is definitely where we're going to want it. However, I think uh, our gearing ratio is actually all right. This might be perfect out of the bat, right out of the gate, but I'm gonna explain kind of why we have our gears so close together in fourth, fifth, and sixth. So pretty much with these kinds of drift builds, you're not gonna be able to just casually drive in a straight line around the map. This is at the end of the day, a drift build. It's for drifting. If I pin it, my tires are gonna start spinning and it's going one way or the other. Now you can still control it in a straight line, but that's not what it's for. This is for point drifting and just nice dr casual drifting around the city. So say I was coming up to a corner and I'm in fourth gear and I think, wow, good Lord, I can't hold that corner. If you switch to fifth gear, you're barely losing any of your speed, but you're getting a little bit more RPMs because the gears are so close together that that will allow you to push around that corner. I don't really give a good example here at the moment, but you're really never gonna be below fourth gear unless you're like really tight drifting like we might around the festival here. Like right here, I might go into third gear because it's a little bit of a tight corner, but if you're generally like on a road and most other spots, you're not gonna be going. See, even in third gear in here where it's very tight and a lot of corners, I'm still redlining a lot. So these drift builds are mostly for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh gear. And that's really it. Um. That's kind of a crash course on how I make my drifting tunes, and I like to think my tunes are generally pretty easy. I know they work on controller and on simulation wheels both very well because I use all my own tunes if I use a controller, and it's really the same experience. So if you were curious as to, oh, these might only work on one or the other since he's using a wheel, it's only for wheels. Nope, they will work on controller too. I might put a little thing in the comments just so people know when they click on. Anyways, if you stuck through to the end, I really appreciate it. Let me know with a like or a comment down below so I can give you a heart. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this one. Hopefully this was helpful somewhat for you guys. I know you guys found the race tuning guide very helpful. So I figured I'd make this one since a lot of new players are on the game since it just came out yesterday. So boys, that's gonna be it. We'll see you on the next one. A peace. <laughs> oh, also before you type it in the comments, yeah, all wheel drive is power sliding. Nobody cares. Drifting is drifting. We're just having fun on a game. <laughs> all right, bye.